folks I hear. Well, a group of us have talked online. Well, I've talked to Humphrey and Humphrey's talked to a bunch of other people and we're all going to make this little China Girl pattern. And it is from Chipplewood. Chipplewood is an Etsy store and it is by a man named Sirhan and he does a whole bunch of patterns and you can buy the patterns. And when you buy them, this one was $4. And when you print it off, he has all the pieces already cut out individually. Oops. <laughs> and yeah, so this is kind of small. I thought about blowing it up, but I'm gonna try to make it small and see how I do. Anyway, it's gonna be fun. So let's just do it and see what we can do. I picked out some wood. So for the hair, I thought I would use this. It's like got some purpley streaks. Well, purple when you first cut it out, but it looks like that after it's been exposed to air for a while. Still pretty though, but I thought her hair would be cool with that. Then I picked out a bunch of other wood, but I didn't end up using them for the areas that I ended up using them. I changed my mind a lot along the way. The hair was the only one that ended up sticking with the original plan. It looks like he has all of the pieces numbers too. So when I see him here, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna get him confused, but he has them numbered on this also. So that's awesome. Okay, these pieces are so small. I am actually gonna spray the wood with spray glue, and then I'm gonna put the little pieces onto the wood. And you know what? That worked really well. This is the Bolivian rosewood for the hair, aspen for her face and eight of the flowers, yellow heart for her robe and two of the flowers, her hair ties and the yellow inside part of the flower in her hair, purple heart for the flower in her hair and her belt and her eyes, walnut for the dark areas of the shield and cherry for the lighter parts of the shield or fan or whatever we're calling this thing that she's holding. And I used the Hegner scroll saw to cut the pieces out. The flowers were so small, so I cut as much as I could, and then I left a long handle on the wood. Then I double stacked the wood, which acted like a zero clearance insert, so I could cut away that last little bit, and then it cut away the handle. And here are all of the pieces. And all the tiny pieces that I decided not to intarsize into her, but just set them onto her. Then I made a few sanding shims with some thin plywood, tracing the group of pieces that I wanted to sand together. Then cutting those plywood shims out on the scroll saw. Then I used thin double stick tape to put the groups of pieces onto the shims. Then I sanded those grouped pieces all together as one on the pneumatic drum sander using 100 grit. First her hair and head, then the robe. And the shield. Then I used my palette knife to separate the pieces from the shims. 
Then I started softening the edges and sanding the surface of each piece using the flex drum with 220 grit. The shield had so many little pieces that I decided to tack glue them together with DAP CA glue. The shield has nine inner pieces of cherry, then nine middle pieces of walnut with nine more cherry pieces for the outer part of the shield. I decided to glue the inner, middle, and outer pieces together like a piece of pie, so there would be nine pieces of pie that would make up the shield. So it was a pie piece of cherry, walnut, then cherry. And once that glue was set up, I took those pie pieces and sanded them individually. Then I traced all around Kyoko to make the backer board and cut that out on the Hegner again. Then sanded all the fuzzies away and put her back together to make sure she fit on there just right. Then did some hand sanding in areas that needed it. Now I'm cutting these flowers that are really tall down to be short like that. And I'm doing it on my bandsaw, my tiny bandsaw, like that. I cut down all these little flower pieces, making them as thin as possible for now. Then used DAP again, and I squirted it onto a small ripped off piece of sandpaper, and then I picked up that tiny inner piece for the flower, dabbed it into the glue, and placed it onto the purple flower that goes in her hair. Then I went and got all the tiny flowers and sanded them as best I could and placed them where they were supposed to go on Kyoko. Then I took them one at a time and dabbed them in the glue, and then I dabbed off the excess glue, and then I put them in place. And once the glue was all set up, then I took a piece that had a flower on it and I sanded the flower down as short as I could make it. And I did that for each piece that had a flower. I also did that with the eyes and the mouth. Then I used a Sharpie and I colored the back side of the backer board and also the edges. I did this because there was a black laser line on the backer for some previous thing I had done apparently, so I wanted to cover that up. Well, the back is black, and so I won't be able to laser a verse on, so I took a little tiny piece of wood and I put a verse on it. I put John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me, and I'm gonna put that right there. Then I used DAP again, and I glued that little verse on the back. Then I used Old Master's Poly Gel and wiped it on every piece and then wiped it off. And after letting that set up six hours, it's time to put her together! Woohoo! I like this part! Yay! Then I used Tight Bond Quick and Thick to start gluing the pieces to the backer. I started with one piece of her hair, putting the glue on the backer and then putting the piece back in place. Then I let that set up before adding more. Then later I added the rest of the head and the hair pieces and will let them set up. And once those were set, then I removed the rest of the pieces and put the glue on the backer and put the pieces back in place. Then I glued the flower onto her hair. And I used a small brush to clean up any squeeze out. The nice thing about Tight Bond Quick and Thick is that it dries clear. So if you miss some, then it is difficult to see once it dries. Yay! Once it was all set up, I added a small hanger to the back. 
This type of hanger has some small teeth that poke into the project, then has a small hole to attach it with a small screw. It was the perfect little hanger for this Kyoko project. I can't seem to find it online, but I did find it at Ace Hardware. pattern, which you could blow up, but I just printed it off um, the way that I downloaded it, and it's pretty small. So I put the link down in the description box, and it goes to Chippewood Etsy page, and it's Sirhan, and it's the patterns that he has made. And so, yay! So thanks for joining me, everybody, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!